GPP. 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 What's going on, fantasy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching the couch. These are my NFL DFS picks for week four. In these weekly DFS videos, we'll be talking a lot about big pull GPPs contrarian picks, identifying those super cheap players, those contrarian players. We will talk a little bit about cash games, and of course we will identify the chalk because that's important no matter what type of contest you are playing. Let's start off with the quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes priced at 7,500, most expensive quarterback, and rightfully so. He has proved himself. It's yet another season. He's doing it without Tyreek Hill. He's proved that he can do it without Kareem Hunt. He's proved he can do it without Damian Williams, with Shady McCoy banged up. It doesn't really seem to matter. Give him a pigskin, uh, have Andy Reid as a coach, decent O-line, and he can make things happen. I feel like I have to have some lineups with Mahomes in both cash and GPP. Lamar Jackson haven't decided yet. Um, I know that they need to do a better job photoshopping him. I guess they figured Flacco would still be playing uh, on the Ravens. Like, yes, yeah, Lamar Jackson guys are running back. We don't need to photoshop this properly. I'm thinking about fading him. Although I'm still intrigued by Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown. So I don't know, I'm going back and forth. I think I have some better options though, for sure. And one is Matthew Stafford. I like targeting quarterbacks playing against the Chiefs because big shootouts. Stafford will have to throw the ball. He'll have to throw the ball to his running back carry on, to his tight end Hawkinson, Amendola, Marv Jones, Kenny Galladay. Everyone's gonna be getting targets. And Matthew Stafford, super cheap at 5,500. Really good value. And we got to talk about Daniel Jones, right? Danny Dimes, great debut. And for those of you thinking, oh, it was the Bucks, he still did really good. Just, okay, just put it like this. If it was Eli Manning playing, he would have probably threw one touchdown against the Bucks, maybe two. And you got Daniel Jones putting up two touchdowns uh, through the air, two touchdowns on the ground, playing well, uh, moving the pocket, running around, making plays. He just lit it up, and it is officially the Daniel Jones era. There's no doubt about that. And price at 5,300 going against a great matchup. Washington's pass coverage is absolutely horrible. And, man, you, you got to at least consider having him in some lineups. This video is sponsored by FanshareSports.com. It has lots of data on who's gonna be contrarian picks coming up this week, who's gonna be chalk. It scours the internet, the radio stations, podcasts, and players that are being overhyped. It lets you know and it comes up with ownership percentages as well as a lot of other data. It's super useful and they actually helped me come up with my picks for this week. Make sure to head on over to FanshareSports.com and sign up for a Fanshare Pro subscription. Get 20% off when you use promo code COUCH. Again, the link is in the description, fansharesports.com, and use promo code COUCH. And according to my Fanshare Sports Pro subscription, we know that Mahomes will be a top five, uh, projected to be a top five owned quarterback. We know that Stafford will also be a top five projected uh, ownership as well. And even Daniel Jones, these guys are being talked about a lot. They have a lot of buzz. People are talking about them in podcasts. And so let's identify some more contrarian picks, ones I really like. And this is surprising because Fanshare Sports is projecting a two, around a 2% ownership for Deshaun Watson. A bit crazy, I think. Because this offense really runs through him, whether he's getting rushing stats or throwing the ball. He's got a ton of targets to throw to, including Cutie, uh, Kenny Stills, Fuller, Hopkins. Maybe even use Duke Johnson. Probably not, but he might use him. Might use Carlos Hyde. He's got a ton of players to throw to. He's also using the tight ends. What's going on here? Deshaun Watson, super elite quarterback, will be contrarian somehow. I don't know... It kind of makes sense, I guess, because you do have Lamar Jackson and Mahomes right next to him on this list. Yeah, they're super close to him. And I, I guess people would be just more attracted to go with that or a cheaper option. And a quarterback I really like is Kyler Murray at home. 
One way or another, the Seahawks are going to be scoring the ball. So a lot of people like Wilson. I get that. I like him too this week. But they'll score with Rashad Penny having a chance of actually suiting up this week, even though he's hurt. We have Chris Carson. Um, they're going to score. Just one way or another, they'll score, and Kyler Murray will have to play catch-up. He's at home. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. You can even stack them with David Johnson because they are shorthanded. They just cut Michael Crabtree, and I believe Bird is out as well. A little bit shorthanded, so David Johnson is going to be playing receiver quite a bit. And last one here, one that people will not like. You guys will go, this triggers me, Ugh, is Marcus Mariota. Fanshare Sports projecting a less than 1% ownership for Marcus Mariota. The slate, about medium scoring, not a super big shootout, not a low scoring game. But I think it does have a potential to be a shootout. Uh, Matt Ryan, good quarterback, playing at home. Falcons will surely score. Now, Derrick Henry could definitely get a ton of touchdowns. But we've seen Mariota put up some big numbers in the past. He didn't play too well last week, but against the Jaguars, still threw for 300 yards. And of course, no one's really talking about that, especially when you turn on the TV. No one's talking about DraftKings 300 bonus because he actually did outscore Minshew. He was the better real quarterback, but Marcus Mariota got more DK fantasy points. Just wanted to throw that out there. Look at this, 24 fantasy points, 13, 18. So definitely under the radar, super contrarian, risky pick, but a super cheap one priced at only 5100 playing in a dome in Atlanta. Moving on to running backs. And there's, there's a couple of, in, I'm indecisive about Lamar Jackson and I'm indecisive about Austin Eckler because this is changing so rapidly. It is a fluid situation. Melvin Gordon's coming back and the day Melvin Gordon starts practicing, Justin Jackson is in a boot and will not play. He is 100% officially ruled out. And so now they're almost forced to start Melvin Gordon or at least have him suit up. At least I like to think so. With no Justin Jackson, I see Austin Eckler being the starting running back, getting the lion's share of the carries. But then you have Melvin Gordon, who's a talented back, who's done a lot, suiting up. So this is a situation just to monitor. And by the way, they are facing the Dolphins. And it's actually more crazier. Look, Travis Benjamin is doubtful. And then we have Mike Williams officially ruled out. And people forget already because Hunter Henry's always hurt. He's only played like a, like one game the past two years. So Hunter Henry is out to Virgil Green, who's a blocking tight end, but still number two tight end. He's out as well. So there's so much going on that we can see Austin Eckler and Melvin Gordon uh, getting a lot of targets and playing receiver, maybe out on the field at the same time. Chargers always have bad luck. Chargers are always cursed. And here we go again. Chargers have the injury bug like they do just about every year. I mean, other than Phillip Rivers, who's always healthy, all these Chargers are always hurt, man. Such bad luck. And here are my two favorite running backs this week. David Johnson, priced at 6800 I talked about him briefly with Kyler. He's going to be playing receiver. He's going to have some running lanes, even though the O-line is not that good. And I love him to have a big bounce back game. He proved that he can do some things week one. Had a bad week two against a pretty tough matchup. Week three, he was so-so. But man, he still keeps proving. Look at this. So week one seven targets week three nine targets and so we can see this man have well over 25 touches if he's used how he's supposed to be and that'll give him a lot of opportunities to rack up that 100 plus bonus although it's not the stats aren't showing that he can do that easily but still he can rack up the 100 plus yard bonus he can definitely rack up those ppr points get a ton of receptions and of course touchdowns he's going to be used in the goal line a lot we just need the kyler murray and the cardinals to get in the red zone and then we have mark ingram going against the browns man this guy has been an elite fantasy running back this year Putting up, wow, look, 26 fantasy points, 10 fantasy points, 38 fantasy points. 
He's been really good. Uh, used in the past game a little bit. Justice Hill was a flyer, a dart that I was considering last week. I had him in one lineup. Also had Tony Pollard in one lineup. And I think it's pretty much proven now that Justice Hill is irrelevant. It's strictly Mark Ingram with Gus Edwards being a change of pace running back. We know Gus Edwards can't really catch, but because Justice Hill wasn't used against Kansas City when the Ravens were trailing, when they needed to play catch up, they needed to score points. We didn't see Justice Hill be used. We didn't see him get a lot of targets. It was actually Mark Ingram was the pass catching back, was the back. And priced at 6,600, good value, high floor, Pretty good ceiling as well. And then we have Marlon Mack, who's going to be chalk because his price is amazing at 6100 Colts should easily win this game. And I just want to talk about Chris Carson, kind of like how I talked about Eckler. We have Chris Carson, super talented running back. Great opportunity here. And I would be comfortable putting him in some lineups. But as I'm recording this, it seems like Rashad Penny has a realistic shot of suiting up. So just want to mention that great matchup. Could have good opportunities. Maybe not. Good price. So very volatile, crazy situation there that I just wanted to go over. Uh, price 5700 going against the Cardinals. And then we have Carryon Johnson. We know CJ Anderson there. Carryon Johnson is super cheap. Has had three mediocre, three disappointing weeks. Uh, week one, eight fantasy points. Then 16 fantasy points. Then 11 fantasy points. He's definitely going to have a lot of usage though. And we saw his usage go up with CJ Anderson no longer on the team. I think he's going to need more targets in the passing game though for him to really pan out or have a big play. But that can definitely happen. Weird team this Lions team is. Still 5400 super cheap. And then if you're looking for a punt, a super contrarian pick, and according to Fanshare Sports, this guy is about a 1% ownership projection, if I can find him, priced at 4300 Carlos Hyde, we saw Duke Johnson's pretty much irrelevant in this offense. He's being dropped in season-long leagues. We do have Carlos Hyde, who's getting a lot of work. He's just kind of a pedestrian running back, you know, like all Texans running backs are the past few years. Ever since Arian Foster uh, left and, and doesn't play anymore, he's got 10 carries week one, 20 carries week two, 10 carries week three. Not really used in the passing game. Still, I did want to mention this because of two reasons. Super cheap price. Not a lot of cheap priced uh, players out there this week. So super cheap price running back. Gets a lot of work. Uh, matchup is not great. Uh, not included in the passing game. But also a contrarian pick. Not a lot of people will be on the Carlos Hyde train. Moving on to wide receivers. The top two guys I have that are in that elite price range are DeAndre Hopkins, priced at 7700 going against the Panthers. And Keenan Allen, priced at 7600 going against the Dolphins. Should get a ton of targets. Dolphins should definitely double cover Keenan Allen. Easier said than done. And I don't know, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just leave him on an island with uh, Xavier Howard. They could easily do that. But he's going to get a lot of targets nonetheless. It's, it's going to happen. And then we have a crazy situation here with the three Rams wide receivers. I myself would be fading Cooper Cup, even though... In season long legs, I'll tell everyone to start Cooper Cup. In cash games, he's okay. I get it. He's definitely Goff's favorite target. But in GPPs, I'm going to be banking on another wide receiver to have a good game. And that's between Cup, Cooks, and Woods. And this week, a bit of a guess game, a bit of a crapshoot. But number one, I would go with Cooks. And then number two, I would go with Woods. And number three, Cup. Because a lot of people are going to be on Cup. We have Kenny Galladay priced at 5900 in that shootout game against the Chiefs. And one of my favorites this week, Sterling Shepard. Danny Dimes, number one wide receiver, priced at 5800 going against a horrendous Washington secondary. And, ooh, you guys want a, want a spicy one? Allen Robinson 
going against the Vikings. I don't see a lot of people owning him. Price at 5,600. The homie Taylor Gabriel is out, I believe, because of a concussion. And yeah, they are facing the Vikings, so it's going to be a tough game. But how many targets do you see Allen Robinson getting? Well, looking right here, he's been getting at least seven targets a game. He got 13 week one against the Packers, seven week two against the Broncos, and seven week three against Washington. So I definitely see him getting a lot of targets. And this is another one of those situations. Will they double team? Allen Robinson or leave him on an island with Xavier Rhodes. I think they'll leave him on an island. I think he's worth having in a couple of your GPP lineups. Definitely not a cash play, hands down. And we got to mention all three Chiefs wide receivers pretty much. Like they can, they can all go off like uh, any given week. So we got Demarcus Robinson and of course, Miko Hardman. They're both amazing. Sammy Watkins. Very good as well. We know Mahomes is on a super elite. He's just on another level. And Christian Kirk, who's priced super cheap. I see this man getting over 10 targets this week. He's got 12 targets week one, then, then 8 targets week two, 12 targets week three. He's got to have double-digit targets this week in a plus matchup against the Seahawks. Kyler Murray at home. I love it, man. Christian Kirk, only 5,100. Like him in both cash and GPP. You want some cheap picks? Let's look at some cheap picks. I got a crazy one. And I, I got to admit, I'm almost scared to say names like this, like Allen Robinson, because I know it's pretty risky and it, it could look dumb. It could really not pan out. And here's one that's even dumber and crazier than that. And that's Dion Kane. He can go off for that big play touchdown because the Raiders are going to be like, oh my God, we got to start. Mar we, we have to stop Marlon Mack. We have to stop Marlon Mack. And then boom. Deion Kane with his speed could beat you for a long touchdown. I don't think T.Y. Hilton is going to play, and that's why I do. I am talking about Deion Kane. So if T.Y. Hilton does play, and let's just pretend he's healthy, I wouldn't be talking about Kane. But priced at 3,200, that's basically minimum price because the minimum price for wide receiver is 3,000. Good matchup here. It's really just a dart and should be super contrarian because he hasn't had one good game yet. He's had a little bit of hype and that hype has died down. Now, I do have some other cheap punts that are uh, more... Um, that are that are less dumb, and that is Keyshawn Johnson at 3,200 with Bird out, Michael Crabtree not on the team anymore. We'll see Keyshawn Johnson get at least seven, eight, I think maybe nine targets this game. Price at 3,200. We've talked about the Cardinals quite a bit. It's probably the team I talked about. Uh, the most so far in this video. And then we have another punt. I'm not going to be able to find this guy. Nope, that's spelled wrong. Inman. Dontrell Inman. Minimum priced, 3000 He's the number two wide receiver on the Chargers with Benjamin Doubtful. Mike Williams is ruled out. And Inman has been a trustworthy target for Rivers. Obviously doesn't have high numbers, but going against the Dolphins... You figure you want to have at least some shares in Keenan Allen and maybe some shares in Dontrell Inman. Having him in the same lineup, meh, maybe if you're doing a river stack, but I think it's safe. I think it's a good idea to have at least one in one of your lineups if you're doing multiple lineups. And you can't really beat the price and the value here. He's sure to get some targets, especially if the Dolphins decide to try to win the game and maybe double Keenan Allen. Dontrell Inman, one-on-one -on -one coverage. For tight ends, I like four tight ends. Of course, Kelsey's a baller. Do we need to talk about that? Let's talk about Evan Ingram should be getting a ton of targets, having big plays. He's basically a cheat code because he's a wide receiver with a TE tight end designation. And then we have Darren Waller, absolute beast every week. I think he's going to be quite owned, though, in a lot of leagues. And that's why I'd rather go with Ingram. Or actually, Mark Andrews, who has a foot injury, is questionable and coming off a bad game. This is when I go all in when it comes to GPPs. He had a bad game. He's got that red questionable designation, that questionable tag. Let's go with Mark Andrews. Could have a huge game against the Browns. 
Um, he could have a huge game. He's pretty much matchup proof. So let's see if that foot really will hinder him week four. I don't think it will. Now, he didn't really practice at all until Friday. I like Mark Andrews. Price is not right, and that's why I like him even more. I don't see anybody owning him. Tight ends are a bit of a crapshoot. And with tight ends, the matchup doesn't really matter too much. It's really hard to predict which tight end is going to do good. And then my last one is TJ Hawkinson. And I see this being a bit more chalky because the price is right. He's due for a big game going against the Chiefs. Stafford will need to throw the ball a lot. I can't resist but to have him in a lot of my lineups. Super cheap, 3300 Should be a huge bounce back game for the Hawk. And for defenses, it's been a weird week so far right not a lot of minimum price running backs not a lot of cheap plays there and uh not a lot of tight ends to pick from but when it comes to defenses there are a ton uh to go off of and so let me just tell you the ones that i like the most and my cheapest option that i would have some kind of confidence with is the broncos and we don't really need to separate ourselves and pick a contrarian defense but if you're looking for one this is the one right here, and it's a very unique situation because all these um, inexperienced DFS players, they'll stay away from Denver. But the more experienced ones, when we look at the NFL lines, we have one of the lowest scoring games this week is this Broncos-Jaguars game. And believe it or not, the Broncos, and I'm, I'm looking right now just to make sure, the Broncos are favorited to win at home by three. The over-under is 38 and a half points. That's super low scoring. Matter of fact, the only other game that's slated to score less is over-under 38, and that's the Bears-Vikings game. And so low scoring game, Broncos are at home, They're due for a bounce back game. Um, not a lot of confidence, but the price is right. If you really need to squeeze in some players, you can go with the Broncos right here. Not a lot of trust, but should be great value. And we know defenses are a little bit tough to predict, kind of like tight ends. And then we have the Colts D. Raiders should not score too many points. Price at 3100 This is a home game for the Colts. I see a lot of running. Uh, with Mac, a lot of RB use, milk the clock, win the game, get out of there. Raiders are one-dimensional. Darren Waller, Terrell Williams, uh, Josh Jacobs, that's all they do. And who else do we have that's more expensive? The Bears, Chicago Bears, priced at 3400 I love them. Should be the best defense this week, I'd like to think. Super low scoring game going against the Vikings. If Kirk Cousins throws the ball, a lot of disasters could happen. This could be the one game, the first time Dalvin Cook puts up pedestrian numbers against the Bears. I definitely do see that happening. And for more expensive defenses, as you know, I already like the Bears. Um, the Rams would be a little bit more contrarian. They are priced actually $100 more. Jameis Winston has been known to make some mistakes. And of course, I like the uh, Patriots and Chargers D, but I'm more of a guy who wants to save a little bit and just go with the Bears D here. Or like I said, super contrarian with the Broncos D. Head on over to FanshareSports.com or follow the link below in the description. If you decide to go pro, get a Fanshare Pro subscription. Make sure you use promo code couch and save 20 percent also make sure you subscribe to this youtube channel we have a second youtube channel as well please please subscribe to that as well and like this video if you enjoyed it dislike if you didn't comment below let me know what you think and i'll catch you on the next video slash live stream